Hey everybody, my name is Kat Bowser. I'm your resident fantasy therapist and welcome back to my channel. Those of you here for the first time, welcome. My name is Kat Bowser. I'm a licensed therapist. I'm also a writer working on my first two novels, one being a standalone, one being the start of a series. And on my channel I like to talk about what I consider to be the heart of all writing and that's the characters. And the heart of the characters is their psychology. So that's the angle I like to take with pretty much everything I talk about on my channel. Hey guys, so another little fun video that I wanted to do, um, and it was actually inspired in part because I just got news this week that they are doing a sequel to one of my favorite animes. They are doing a sequel to Inuyasha, and I'm happy, and I'm excited, and I am nervous. <laughs> um, and so it actually got me thinking about there has been a trend, especially I've noticed in anime, <laughs> um, about when you continue a series, you go to a next generation. Um, I think Naruto did it, now Inuyasha is doing it. Um, it's very popular <laughs> um, to, if you're going to continue a story, let's jump to the next generation and let's have fun with them. So I wanted to talk about why that usually doesn't work and what we might can do to fix it. Okay, so next generation stories are essentially where you've had a popular story that has reached its end, the, the conflict's over, it's done. So rather than creating new adventures with these old characters, the author instead opts, let's jump ahead into the future, let's introduce their children, and we're gonna follow their children and have adventures with their children. Now, I am not adamantly against this idea. I think it can be done well. I think it has been done well. It's just not usually done well. <laughs> um, and I think there's a couple reasons behind that, so I just wanted to delve into that a little bit. Um, I think the first and foremost reason is you are introducing completely new characters to people who have grown up or have fallen in love with your old characters. So you have almost a double duty going on here because usually when you're writing a story and you introduce characters, it's already a challenge to get your reader to connect with these characters. But when you do a next generation story, you have the double issue of you have to make your reader care about and want to follow these new characters, knowing that there are older characters that they already know and already love and want to revisit that are still there and you're not including them. <laughs> and I think that's one of the main issues is that the author introduces these brand new characters and the reader doesn't want new characters. They want their old characters. Um, I think that is one really big problem. Um, I definitely see this in, um, like I'll, I'll use Harry Potter. I mean, I know, I know the cursed child is like horrific among the fandom and most people don't want to even talk about it but I think it's a good example um in that instead of exploring more adventures with the characters that you grew up with now we're following one of their children and the focus is on them now as far as I understand people did like some of the new characters in the story but there was also another issue which I'll get to in a minute but you're essentially setting it in the same world with the old characters still there. And honestly, most of the time the fans are interested in what they've been up to, what they have accomplished. And if they're mentioned, they're usually mentioned in passing. And so it's almost kind of a tease to the fans. Like, okay, I don't want to know about this new character. I want to know about the character I've already fallen in love with. So there's almost, there's, there's this resistance to embrace these new characters because they want the old ones. Um, the other issue that comes about a lot, and it happens not just in these stories, but usually when you have a big time skip, um, the personalities of the old characters change and people don't like it. Um, I've seen this probably the most in that after characters become parents, their personality completely shifts. Now, I'm not going to deny that becoming a parent definitely changes you. Certain things that you used to do, you will not do anymore. But your core personality isn't going to completely morph into something different. Um, 
if you were someone beforehand who was hot-headed and impulsive, you may have learned to tone it down because of your children, but that's still part of your personality. It's still there. If you were a sensitive person beforehand, you're still going to be a sensitive person. You've just learned to tune things. But what happens in a lot of these stories is the old personality is just, it's, it's gone. And now they've given them a completely new personality to suit the plot. And people don't like that. <laughs> um, let's see. So I think when you're doing a new generation story, here's my thought. It needs to be gradual. Um, I will reference, I'm going to reference Dragon Ball because like I said, one, it's one of my favorite animes, but two, I think it's one of the few animes that did this right. Um, the original anime, you start with Goku as a child and then through it, he grows. And at the end of the, or end into the first part, he's an adult. He's like 18, 19. Um, and then the second part starts, he has a child. There's been like, I think five years, five years skip and he has a child. Um, now in Japan, this is all one story. There isn't a split. It's all one story. And I think that helped it because it wasn't a case of, okay, we've stopped to this one. Now we're doing this one. It was a case of, oh, here's what keeps happening. We're still following this plot. So that, in that case, it's, it was more, okay, here's some new characters I'm introducing just like you would in a regular long story. Now in America, they split it and we actually saw second half first. We, we got Dragon Ball Z first and then we got Dragon Ball. Um, mainly because of the popularity. They tried Dragon Ball first, didn't really take off, so then they jumped to Dragon Ball Z. But anyway, but I think what works is that you introduce Goku's son, Gohan, and he is an important part of the plot, but Goku is still strongly involved in the plot. So, especially in the beginning, we have Goku has his plot that he's doing, Gohan has his, his plot that he's doing, and we follow both of them. So they're both getting almost equal time here. And I think that was smart. And in Gohan's case, they introduced characters that were involved in Goku's plot prior. So we get to see all these old characters that we know. And they play important roles. They're, sh they're strong in the plot. They're important. And I think that makes people more acceptable to a new character because they're not overshadowing the old one. And when Goku comes back and the plots merge into one again, it's fairly balanced. I mean, there's, there's a lot of the old characters the fans already know. And then there's some new ones that are introduced and we follow them that way. Um, and so as a general rule, by the end of the story, it was starting to lean more towards the new characters or taking over more than the old characters. And while there were still some fans that didn't like it, I mean, you're always going to have that. It was still, people were more accepting of it. And I think that's really the best way to do it. If you're going to do a new generation story is you can't just jump from here's all the old characters that you love, here's some new characters, and we're not, we're gonna like barely mention these guys. <laughs> um, I think making it a slow, gradual change is really the best way to approach it because then you're gonna have time for people to adjust and learn about these new characters with their old characters. And I think that makes people more. They like that more. That That's more acceptable to them because then it feels like you're not completely trashing their old character and just getting them out of the way. Um, I think also giving the old character something to do um, is also important because you don't want them to just, like I said, vanish entirely. You want to make them still relevant for a while and then you can gradually shift the focus from them to these new, these new characters. And I think that tends to work better so general people don't like a, sh a huge shift in what they know. It's uncomfortable. It makes them defensive. So in my mind, that's kind of the best way if you're going to do a new generation story is you need to make it a gradual change and not a sudden, okay, here's what we're doing. 
So those are just just some thoughts that popped up while I was thinking about these um, new stories that are coming out. I'm still excited about it. I'm a little nervous about it, so we'll have to see how they do. Um, but I thought it was interesting to talk about, especially for people that are like writing series and things like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, if you have any comments or suggestions, leave them below. I will get to them as soon as I can. If you want to know whenever I upload, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so that you don't miss any new videos. I try to upload every Friday, every Sunday, um, or as often as I can. Um, and until next time, I hope you guys have a good one.